Hello and welcome to this review of my IBM Model M13 keyboard. Finally, I get to show you one of these. The M13 is a special version of the Model M, a keyboard that I've talked about many times on this channel. It's easily recognizable over a normal M by the presence of this Eraserhead style track point 2 pointing stick in the middle of the keyboard, as well as its slick black color scheme. There were also versions of this keyboard in the standard beige color, as well as models in industrial gray. But the black one is the most common and also the most iconic. Look at that nice proper 3D black badge as well, rather than the simple sticker that other oval badge M's had. The standard model M looks impressive, yet dated because of its beige color scheme, which is instantly associated with the 90s. But I think that the black M13 holds up very well even nowadays. Looks menacing, almost evil, a symphony in ebony. However, even then, its giant footprint of 49 by 21 centimeters, that's 30,001 square nautical millimiles for those who prefer the imperial system, compared to, for example, this Dell L100 series piece of rubbish, makes it stand out from the crowd a bit. The M13 tends to go for a lot more than a standard Model M on account of its desirable black color scheme and greater rarity, while a run-of-the-mill M tends to go for around $50 to $100 or so on eBay nowadays, the M13 tends to go for $200 to $300 for the black version. The beige ones are cheaper, and the industrial versions can be even more expensive. I got mine for $100 off eBay. It was slightly dusty, but otherwise in great condition, so I'm pretty pleased with this. I've been wanting to get one for a very long time, but the usual high price was prohibitive, so I had to wait for one I could afford. <laughs> Just. I absolutely had to have a clean one with relatively little use on the clock as well, because what many people don't know, or overlook, is that unlike the extremely durable die sublimed lettering of the stand-up Model M, the black version of the M13 uses what appears to be either pad printed or silk screened legends, which both have a much shorter lifetime than die sublimation. This makes sense when you think about it because dye sublimation works by diffusing an ink into the plastic, so you can obviously only use a dye that's darker than the host material, which is why you can't dye sub black caps, unless you inverse dye sub them, but that seems to be a completely new thing. Anyway, this results in most old M13s having partially or heavily worn lettering in places, particularly on the A and S keys. I think if everyone knew this, the market value of these black M13s would actually decrease significantly. If you can touch type and you have one with badly worn legends, it might be better to just deck it out with a set of blanks from Unicomp instead. Unicomp no longer do printed black caps though. Anyway, let's look at the track point two stick thing, which I try to use as much as possible during the testing period. Last week, I reviewed a Cherry 11800 with a trackball and an 11900 with trackpad too, which made for excellent comparison material. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that unlike with trackballs and trackpads, the track point two is embedded right in the middle of the alphanumeric block of the keyboard, rather than to the side or to the bottom. And while this makes it more accessible, it's also more in the way. The stick itself doesn't really move, so it feels like a tiny, incredibly stiff joystick. One advantage it has over a trackball is that you don't have to keep resetting, you know, with a trackball or pad, you have to keep scrolling, so to speak. But with this, you can just keep pointing in the same direction. The disadvantage is that, well, <laughs> frankly, it's pants. I mean, it works, but it's far less precise, and it feels really sluggish, and this kind of defeats the purpose, to be honest. In fact, I'd say that of the three, the track point is by far the least useful, and the track pad is the best. The pointing stick was cleverly placed between the G and H keys, which means that neither finger should technically cross over the track point. Now, of course, I don't touch type in the official manner, which people will probably never stop complaining to me about. But to be fair, even though I crossed over a fair bit, it wasn't in the way all that badly. But still, a normal M has nothing in the way there at all. And much worse, the mouse buttons are exactly below the spacebar in such a place that I kept accidentally clicking them. Now, of course, that does mean that it's very easily accessible, and they probably did it precisely because of that reason. But after accidentally shooting half a dozen hostages in the head in SWAT 4, I gave up and just pulled out the plug because it was getting on my nerves. In other words, in my opinion, the Track Point 2 is actually more trouble than it's worth. 
However, one advantage it has over both the cherry boards I mentioned earlier is that it comes with IBM's famous buckling spring key switches, which, in my opinion at least, blow any Cherry MX switches clean out of the water. I've often praised these for their nice, sharp tactile feel and loud, pleasant and perfectly synchronized click sound. It's a joy to type on these and I'd break out an M any day. One particular thing I've noticed that most M13s, including this one, weren't made by IBM in the US or the UK, but by Maxi Switch in Mexico. The Maxi Switch Mexico plant is often confused for IBM's own plant in Mexico, which also made Model M's, but IBM's was in Guadalajara, while Maxi Switch made their keyboards in Hermosillo. Not to mention, of course, that the two are completely different companies. The fact that most of these were made in Mexico seems to somehow make everyone automatically assume that this version is made out of cardboard and features ultra shit build quality and crappier switches for some reason, but as far as I'm concerned that's just not true. Of course, these were produced during the late 90s, which means it's not going to be as good as one of the ancient 80s square badge models, but compared to a Lexmark or IBM UKM from the same time it's basically exactly the same. Just like my 1996 Model M, it uses a 1mm thick steel plate, 800g PVC case, and it weighs slightly over 2kg in total. The weakest point in the keyboard is probably the cable, which, like other late models M, is a fixed coiled flat cable, rather than the earlier detachable round SDL ones, which were much more robust. The M13 one is still PS2, but it features two connectors rather than one, the other one being for the track point. Or for a mouse, which you can plug into the back of the keyboard here, in which case it functions as a pass-through. The cable on this one is fine, but I've seen many examples where the cable starts to fray and come apart. However, this also happened with US and UK made M's of the time, so it has nothing to do with it being an M13 or being from Mexico. It also has the drainage channels that later models M had to protect it from liquid spills, which is one of the model M's worst enemies. In fact, having the same build characteristics as other third generation models M, it's a lot heavier and I'd say built considerably better than a Unicomp, with the exception of the cable. As for the key feel, it feels just like any other third gen model M I'd say. Of course, a third gen model M doesn't feel exactly the same as a first gen model M, but it's not as if the M13 is the worst of the lot or anything. The track point is connected to the sensing circuitry via this tiny ribbon cable here which runs over the barrel plate underneath the keycaps. Here you can see what it looks like. The caps are the single piece type rather than the more common and famous two piece caps that came on most M's, but they still appear to be PBT because they don't dissolve in acetone. The black model also appears to be ANSI only because I've never seen any of these in ISO layout or something like that. Anyway, I'd say that although the track point isn't very nice to use compared to a mouse or even a track pad, the keyboard itself is just as good as other third gen model M's and it looks just fantastic. Whether it's worth the insane premium you're paying considering the legends will come off in no time I'll leave up to you, but it's definitely a beaut, a good example of how to make something look nice without needing a whole bunch of bells and whistles. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.